Hi, I'm Russ McKendrick. I'm the Practice Manager of DevOps and SLE at Node4 and I'm joined by April Edwards from Microsoft and today we're just going to have a chat about infrastructure as code. Thank you, Russ, for having me. Um, so I am a senior software engineer at Microsoft and cloud advocate, and I've come from an operational background into kind of development, and we see um, a massive shift in organizations want to automate things when they move to Azure, and I understand you guys have a kind of an automation practice. Yeah, so we use several tools for that. One of them is Ansible, which is by Red Hat, and we typically tend to work with customers um, to not only make their deployments reproducible, but also reproducible in a way where they can actually target different environments using the same code base. Mm -hmm. So while we talk, what I've prepared is just a quick demo of us actually using Ansible mm -hmm. to basically deploy an entire environment from scratch. So it will produce the resource group, all the necessary networking, deploy a virtual machine, create an image from that machine, add a load balancer, and just generally deploy as a, an application would for a customer. Okay, so we're going from a greenfield site to a fully functioning system and then by, with a the script then? Yes, cool. and we're also doing two deployments. Okay. So basically what we'll start off by doing is creating a resource group. Okay. Um, once we've created that, um, the script will have a look at what IP address we're coming from, mm -hmm. figure that out, mm -hmm. create all the necessary network security group rules so that when we launch our VM, we've got secure access to the SSH port. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So it looks like you have all the networking components there, some secure access uh, enabled off the bat for a customer. Correct, yes. And all of the things like the subnets and all the naming is okay. all driven by variables. Okay. So we can basically just inject those variables at one time mm -hmm. so that if we need to use the same scripts for maybe deploying a dev environment or a staging environment, we just need to tweak some variables rather than rewrite the whole script. And we'll have a like-for-like -like environment. So dev, test, pre-prod, production will all have the very same environment. So customers are testing like-for-like. -like. Correct. So okay. what we've actually done now is we've created a virtual machine. Mm -hmm. We've installed a software stack on it and then we've deployed an image of that uh, machine mm -hmm. um, behind a virtual machine scale set. Okay, and those so are the what resources we're seeing, right there? Yeah, so okay. these are the resources which have been created. And what we're actually going to do now is pass some additional variables um, into the script to just update the body of the HTML file which was uploaded. Mm -hmm. So because the resource group networking and my IP address hasn't changed, it's actually just going through checking it's as it should be, okay. but moving on. So it's basically verifying the code that you've deployed? Yes. Cool. Very cool. Um, now, I saw you had some tagging enabled, so customers can look at what's been, what environments are going through, what environment variables are there as well? Correct. So we tend to tag everything, and actually in the account that this has been deployed in, um, there are rules in place to make sure that everything um, which has been deployed has valid tags, otherwise it will fail. Okay. So you put some kind of extra checks in there to make sure that everything fits a, a specific requirement from an organization. So what we're doing now is we're actually in the process of launching a second virtual machine. Okay. And that second virtual machine, um, we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to create an image of it. And then behind the load balancer, we've got a virtual machine scale set. So okay. we're actually going to go through and update the image and then just manually make sure that that virtual machine scale set is using the new image we've just created. Okay, so you've deployed a new image, you're verifying it, and then you're scaling out so a customer can have multiple instances in their environment. Correct, yes. And during this whole process, the application itself, um, because it's in a virtual machine scale set, is always available. Mm -hmm. So all we're doing is one by one, taking each of the virtual machines out of a scale set and upgrading it to the new image. Okay. So in this case, it's actually a 100% uptime deployment. Oh wow, so there's no downtime for the customer. Correct. Great. So the final step is to actually manually upgrade the machines in the virtual machine scale set. Mm -hmm. And obviously what we don't want to do is we've got virtual machines in place and we want to get rid of them because they're temporary. So the script actually tidies up after itself. So once the image has been successfully created and the deployment has completed, 
it will actually go through and remove all the resources which it doesn't need anymore. So the virtual machine, the network interfaces, the public IP address which was assigned to it. And as you can see, we've just um, updated the image. Yes. And redeploy it and take it all the junk we don't need. Correct. Very cool. So it looks like you have that app, um, that website up and running. Um, and that took probably less than five minutes to get that script running. So we have a full Azure environment in a few minutes' time. Yes. So the advantage of this is we can actually um, sit alongside any existing continuous integration and continuous deployment processes. Um, so basically, when we're doing this sort of deployment, typically a customer may have had a fixed resource um, to actually be able to deploy to build and test. Um, with this, that resource isn't fixed. Um, it's built dynamically each time, so things like configuration drift or maybe someone had to make manual tweaks to a machine to get an older version of the application running. Mm -hmm. So it just helps make those builds um, a lot more successful. Yeah, and, and also consistent and cost effective. Yeah, and that's exactly what our customers want. They want cost effectiveness to the cloud, they want to have repeatable deployments and consistent deployments as well and have that reliability.